first of all, welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, Paranoia X and uh, another webinar of uh, Cybersecurity Insights. I'm uh, very pleased to see that uh, so many of you have been able to attend uh, despite busy uh, November days. And um, I'm positive that you'll get a uh, great experience today. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be joined by, by two leading uh, stars within the uh, cybersecurity spectrum uh, business at Telno Norway. Uh, being responsible for developing security uh, as a service area within Telno, Hannah has uh, no problem filling her days, uh, especially uh, given 2020 and all its um, peculiarities. Uh, with the majority of the working population today logged on from home, uh, awareness and knowledge among the employees and management is, is one of Hannes' um, beliefs. It is very important and it is very important to the overall security as well. Having served as CSO in Telno for over nine years, uh, I am also confident that Hannah knows what she's talking about uh, in these areas. Uh, drawing parallels to the pandemic, uh, Hannah has urged us to find the same communal spirit and collaborate more across sectors in the combat against the ever-increasing cyber threat. And this morning, uh, we are so fortunate to have Hannah here uh, to talk more about hybrid attacks, how we should approach and counter the threats, and why collaboration is key. So without further introduction, uh, Hannah, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you gave a good presentation of, of me and uh, Digital Sikkerhet uh, 2020 is uh, one of the products uh, from my previous uh, role as the CSO in, uh, in Teno Norway, but uh, it is also an important uh, product uh, for business and uh, for the way we think uh, that uh, we can enable uh, businesses to, uh, to implement security measures and how they should think. And uh, Digital Secret is, uh, is also a product for inspiration. It's uh, what we have at uh, our hearts that we want to share. And I think that the knowledge about security is, uh, is a lot of people that have it, uh, a lot of businesses have it. Uh, and we need to find uh, a way to share that uh, knowledge so that we can uh, all take uh, the steps ahead for um, ensuring we do the right things uh, when we have to protect us against uh, whatever we need to protect us about. Uh, um, you know, trade conflicts and uh, also geopolitical insecurity, uh, and also a more complex international threat picture uh, than we have seen before. Uh, it makes us worry. Uh, and COVID-19 has shown that uh, from a Telenor perspective, uh, that we have made some right choices. Uh, and that we as a company, as a service provider, and also as a societal actor at the own uh, critical infrastructure is robust. Uh, it has also shown us that the uh, knowledge of our own vulnerabilities and risk is important to have insight into in order to be able to make the right choices even when the society is in crisis. Because in that moment, uh, we will ensure us, uh, or we need to be uh, ensured that uh, the crisis not get worsened due to the weaknesses in Telenor services or value chains. Either is weaknesses uh, exploited by threat actors that could misuse a, uh, or use a uh, pandemic situation or a crisis situation, uh, or uh, from other condition, which is more regular, whether wind, construction damage, or, or, uh, or other things uh, that goes wrong uh, on a daily basis. And understanding what makes us res resilient, uh, that requires maturity. Um, and it needs to be uh, worked with uh, throughout the organization, because it requires confidence building, and uh, it requires also a holistic understanding of what is needed at all levels from our suppliers to the authorities, at least from a Telenor perspective, authorities are also important. And in a crisis, uh, when you really have to do this, it's uh, all about taking responsibility and make decision. And the ability to, you can say, almost survive and deal with the crisis is also very much then dependent on what your choices have been made in advance because it's uh, what you have done before and how good you are in a crisis situation. It's all about 
preparedness, how ready are you to handle the crisis? And in that respect, uh, I would throw out the question, have you ever considered that your long supply value chains may not just be yours alone? Because it is, pos it is, is it possible that um, foreign intelligence services and advanced criminal actors use the same long supply chains as their own when operating against you and your customers? And is it possible that foreign intelligence services has long perspectives and plenty of time to influence him or her who are close to colleagues with holds information they would like to obtain? And do you have as long perspectives on your security work as those who want to expose you and harm you? I think it's essential that we are aware of uh, the long perspectives that uh, some threat actors have, because that uh, makes them they have good time and they have good possibilities to do it uh, over a long time. And then you have the other threat actors, which also well, I think uh, when we make it harder, uh, we'll work uh, very much, much like the, the professional ones. And uh, we are happy, I think, uh, from a Norwegian perspective, that we live in a country where the security services and the intelligence services is open with their assessments. Uh, and in Terno Norway, we use this actively to understand and develop our threat picture. Because it's important for us to understand the intention of threat actors as well as how they act, their methods and tools. And in that respect, not only the digital way of work, but, uh, but also in the physical area and with, uh, with, uh, with human beings. And uh, we have been working systematically with this for 10 years. Uh, and it's a key element in our enterprise risk management system so that we make sure that uh, the understanding of threat actors uh, are a part of every leader's responsibility that they understand it and that their employee as well because they are the key here to enabling uh, the right mechanisms and the right uh, attitude uh, towards how to make it hard for threat actors. And uh, we are a goal for threat actors and uh, that is uh, what we must build our protection based on. Uh, and I think there are probably too few still uh, who really consider themselves as a target. Do you do that? Uh, do your company say that we are a target, even though you know, you know not to have uh, detected anyone? Uh, I think that's a good uh, uh, way of thinking also from the management level, that they acknowledge that you might, may are uh, uh, compromised and at least that you are a target. Uh, so when I have chosen the title hybrid insecure life it is to focus on the fact that we must have a holistic approach to security operations or from a threat actor perspective and also um, that they do not only appear in the digital universe. I think the digital universe is uh, huge and uh, it's a uh, play field for, for everyone but um, but we also have to think that uh, they use other channels and that they use the physical arena. And, um, well, you can say the digital arena is just one of several ways to act, uh, but it is uh, a very easily accessible, accessible channel uh, that makes it most preferable. But I also think it's one more thing uh, that we should reflect on. And that is the consequent, uh, consequence of uh, of um, attacks uh, because I think we have uh, too much focused on the technical part uh, and uh, also it happens something technical and we fix it technically but it's easy to forget uh, when we talk about the cyber incidents uh, that uh, the consequence uh, appears in another place it could affect the society, it could affect you as, uh, and your businesses, or it could affect individual work uh, and um, work affect in uh, whatever you are doing in your business processes. Um, and, uh, and that is maybe one key element for us to work in, uh, in security, that we start talking more about consequence of an incident and not the technical part of the incident. Uh, and that is also something that uh, we want to focus on uh, towards the authorities in, in Norway because sharing uh, of uh, 
security incident and, and information and uh, what has happened is mainly about the technical part, the methods and the information you need to assure you that uh, maybe this hasn't happened in your company. But uh, from a uh, more business uh, perspective, you should also share uh, the consequence uh, part of it. Um, and all, uh, more um, preferably in, uh, in also at the authority level to share across, uh, across sectors. Um, when it comes to advanced hybrid operation, this is something that we have focused on. At, um, you can say in all uh, all um, editions of the, of digital secret uh, from 2017 to now, but uh, we have been more and more you can say verbal about it, and uh, and also. Last year, we drew out the picture of uh, hybrid attacks and uh, how it appeared over three weeks. If you haven't seen it, uh, you should uh, get uh, the 2019 edition because it shows uh, how complex a hybrid operation could be, but uh, also how it uh, actually could happen. And that uh, we as a business or that we as a, a society uh, are not uh, able to actually see the consequence of this. Uh, and that is because uh, advanced uh, hybrid operation consists of many types of attack methods. Uh, and where digital operation can have, as I said, a, a long supply chain as our own. Uh, and they are complex. They are long term. They are cross sectoral as well as cross industry. And in digital operation against Norway, Norwegian interests, Norwegian companies and Norwegian citizens, the computer, the telephone or network or even the technology is not in itself the threat actor's goal. Uh, and the threat actor wants to steal information that the technology carries out or prepare for an operation that could put technology out of play and looking for a consequence for society or income for itself. And that is something uh, that we should reflect on because that's the real risk here. And robustness and preparedness must therefore be built with the hybrid operation in mind. And where we must, uh, I think, base ourselves uh, on both the logic from rationality, uh, but also from science, and maybe probably also on fiction. I don't think that uh, we have seen uh, what the, what really can happen ha here, and we need to discuss that so that we can build uh, the technologies. Development uh, is uh, on a rapid speed, uh, and then we also think outside the box on what can could possibly happen if they. Uh, exploit something uh, that we haven't been thinking of. So um, that's a key going forward. Uh, and I think that's uh, the way we need to treat this area if we are to be able to, to prepare for uh, tomorrow's threat. So risk management uh, in a business uh, cannot only be based on what uh, has happened. And I think it's uh, pretty much that we do today, that we think of uh, what has happened, uh, because that's our experience space but we must, must um, think of what can happen in a wider uh, perspective and how complex such attacks can be and I think that's a that's a challenge for our leaders uh, which are more of a financial head or marketing head or uh, have another way of thinking uh, and this complex thing of security and threat actors and uh, and how they think well they have to be exposed for it, and you have to uh, paint it out for them how complex this can be and, uh, and what that means for uh, how we need to think all the way through uh, when we build that robustness into our processes and, uh, and uh, our supply chains. Um, and uh, I think it's... Uh, also place a greater demands on us as a company to have an overview and, and control. Uh, and it isn't e easy in the complex uh, globalized world. Uh, we also have to think of what do we have in place? Uh, how do we work with our suppliers to handle the situation? Because there are very few companies that do everything themselves or could do if uh, they wanted to. So uh, if we are to ensure our own value creation, uh, we must uh, I think keep an eye on more than what we see right outside our own business. And we need to have an in-depth knowledge 
of all links in in the value chain in order to protect ourselves against the vulnerabilities and, and manage risk. And that's uh, not an easy task. Uh, and it's uh, easier to be said than done. But uh, I think going forward, this uh, value chain perspective, either it's value chain internally uh, or it's uh, the value chains uh, throughout the supply value chain, you need to invest in competence and knowledge uh, and cooperation with your vendors. Because in a globalized and cost-optimized world, uh, the queues of subcontractors and uh, subcontractors and subcontractors are potentially very long and extensive. So dialogue with your contract or vendor about it is key here. And also have in mind that uh, behind almost every delivery, either it's uh, software or hardware or, uh, or whatever, uh, it is... Uh, an increasingly fragmented and complex, uh, and maybe unfortunately, uh, an increasingly less transparent network of partial and uh, sub deliveries. So, uh, a vendor uh, uses a lot of vendors to actually deliver to you, and how do you secure that? Um, but we also have to think of that the supply value chain is far more than technology. Uh, so that does make it even more complex on HAR because it's the knowledge, it's all the contracts, it's the maintenance agreements, it's the industrial uh, production, it's the research, research and development, uh, it's the transport. Uh, maybe you should transport uh, hardware or some something from uh, one uh, place in the world to another, uh, or and it's the people. Um, and uh, in all this, uh, you also have to think about uh, trust, uh, because you have to trust, right? Uh, or yeah, is trust over? Uh, and that's a key question in Norway, where trust is uh, very valuable. Uh, but in uh, the world we live in now, where the supply chains are so uh, complex and uh, not transparent, <laughs> Uh, I think trust is uh, something we cannot have. Uh, we have to have a certain mindset of, of, of no trust, uh, even that is uh, not the way we do it in Norway. Um, so um, then it's all about uh, the attack surface then. Um, and from my security perspective, the supply chain represents the attack surface. So we have to think about all the totality of your supply chain as possible attack surfaces. And at any business or person uh, that uh, contributes to the subcontract and the subcontractor itself provides an opportunity to influence security further up the supply chain so that the if a threat actor actually knows about our supply chain, they can place themselves on many places. And, uh, and uh, know how to make a consequence by placing something in one uh, certain area of the delivery to you as a, as an, as a customer. And uh, this attack surface increases the likelihood of uh, adverse operational incidents. Also, whether they occur as um, um, a result of cold vulnerabilities uh, or is configuration errors, uh, is it successful personal uh, compromises or it's common instance. And the longer and more fragmented the supply chain is, the further away it also the competence that uh, will be able to handle incidents and the opportunity to influence the handling. And in order to protect the attack surface in an appropriate way, uh, you must understand your own threat picture. And whether you have customers, also understand their threat picture. And that can might sound like, uh, how can I do that? But uh, it depends on the way your business is. Uh, but uh, so it could be a generic understanding of, uh, of customers. But uh, if you work very closely and deliver like really critical thing to a customer, you should uh, understand the threat picture of your customer and try to understand what the risks are in their perspective. You know, the threat actor themselves can we do very little with, but without insight into who and how someone most likely wants to influence your business, it is difficult to take the right risk-reducing measures. 
And you also need to know your um, values and your uh, your features um, that you and your customers uh, possess from the perspective of relevant threat actors. That is what a threat actor considers as value, either as a goal in itself or as a mean to achieve a goal. Because it isn't, it might not be you as a, that are the goal, but you have something that the threat actors need to achieve their goal. Uh, so to go into that mindset and say, okay, this is my critical asset. This is my what I deliver to the customers, but hmm, what do I have that could be relevant for a threat actor to actually uh, use or misuse? Um, to achieve their goals. Uh, it gives a different perspective uh, on uh, how you need to protect you. Um, because what uh, provides the greatest value creation for a threat actor is not necessarily what can cause the company large loss, but may, may bring the threat actor closer to its goal. So th and that is the difficult part. Because then you say, hmm, if it, it might not cause uh, the, our company a large loss, but it might uh, cause our society a loss or uh, our customer a loss. So, so you have to think a little bit wider about uh, about consequence, even though the com competence is not the consequence is not directly uh, affecting you. Um, but I also think that as we become better at protecting our assets and our values and systems and products and solutions, uh, the threat actor will look for alternative weaknesses or use new methods uh, and more resources to achieve this, their intention. Uh, and the advanced threat actors uh, will conduct both physical and logical collection to secure information for later, perhaps as a part of a long term sabotage operation. At least that was. We need to think with uh, owning uh, critical infrastructure. We have to have that wider perspective. And we must not uh, forget the people either, uh, because the insider threat is not new. Uh, but it has become a hot topic due to the globalized business models with our uh, long value chains. And because better protection, and maybe, and that's a uh, it's maybe not be right, but I think that we do have better protection mechanism against attacks. There ha has been done a good work, uh, um, at least uh, in uh, in the Nordics on uh, raising the bar, you can say. But uh, and that means that uh, getting uh, to the information and achieve their goals, they have to go to the soft uh, part as uh, people. Uh, and people then get a very important uh, way into the most valuable information, such as strategies, plans, research, emergency preparedness, preparedness and from my IT perspective, system accounts and uh, administrator rights. Um, so please don't forget the insider part. I think that's uh, crucial and that uh, makes it even more uh, difficult, I guess, to, to protect ourselves. So it's all about uh, your customers, um, your supplies, and it's all about your employees. Uh, and the world is not more dangerous than before. I don't think so. Uh, but we have a set of risks that have changed. So it's the way we work with risk and, uh, and try to develop uh, our risk perspectives. Uh, and that some may misuse the digital front doors or even the physical one. And it requires that you understand what the customers are doing. Uh, it requires what, that you understand what their business is about uh, and what role you play in relationship to them. Um, and you must also understand your own value chains, as I say, uh, and give your employees good training uh, to protect your assets in order to be able to give your customer the best possible protection. And in that means that you also have to work with your vendors when it comes to awareness. It means that you have to work with your vendors uh, by um, sharing your risk picture, by making them understand what is important to you and how they can support you. It's not all about making an agreement and then everything is okay. Uh, they deliver on my security requirements and, and it's uh, all good. 
it's making them understand what the role they place and also how uh, they have to deal with this uh, towards their subcontractors. Um, and it also made that you need to think about assessing liability if something goes wrong on your side with customer or perhaps the opposite in relation to, relation to your suppliers. Who is responsible? Who have to pay? Uh, and how good is that taken care of uh, in your agreements? But of course, that uh, presupposes that you understand how the supply chains are put together. Uh, and that means that uh, you need to take risk uh, management into perspective. Um, we have in in uh, Digital Secret 2020, we have set focus on uh, in such chapter called uh, the, uh, blir lange, when the nights get long. Uh, uh, and that is, uh, I would recommend you to read it because it's uh, very detailing uh, about all the things that you need to think of. Uh, so this is just uh, a highlight uh, of, of the key key mes message about, of course, as I said, understand what is of value for you, your customers and for relevant threat actors. Because that's, uh, we have to start there. You have to start with uh, with uh, what is critical for you, uh, what is uh, my crown jewels, uh, what is my customers' uh, crown jewels uh, or what I'm delivering to them. Either it's supporting them as uh, consultants, uh, delivering IT solutions. Uh, how do I protect them uh, by protecting me? Um, and for relevant threat actors, as I said, look into what uh, do I have that uh, can be of interest for them. Uh, either uh, I am the goal, the customer are the goal, or someone else is the goal. And that's uh, more of the the wider perspective uh, that you need to take in. Uh, and you need to understand and place the responsibility as well as anchor the responsibility and risk at the strategic management level of your organization. And I guess this is not the easy, easiest way uh, for any company. I think uh, security and risk and, and uh, having a holistic uh, approach to enterprise risk management uh, that's a tough, uh, tough game actually. But uh, the risk awareness and and uh, and uh, also the awareness that uh, security uh, needs to be at the board uh, and the top management agenda uh, that is in place, I think, in Norway, uh, in in very in many many uh, companies. But uh, working holistically with risk management uh, and understanding the consequence of risk. Uh, that uh, that might not be in place uh, in all uh, arenas, and you might not all have the structure in place. Uh, so that's also a key to discuss with the top management. How do you enable them in understanding uh, the security risk, and especially the security risk that you have towards your vendor and your supply chains? Um, and it especially is important when you do strategic uh, well, your choices about uh, uh, vendors. How do you uh, present the risk to your uh, top management? How do you make sure that they understand the risk towards choosing this vendor towards this vendor? Have security a place in that uh, selection? Um, many, many places, uh, security is something that is uh, not uh, a part of uh, the vendor selection. So how do you make that sure that they understand the differences between the vendors uh, and how they their approach to security are? And then it's about understanding your supply chain and require insight into them. Um, I think this is also easier said than done. And a lot of the things that we look at in Digital Secret U is is easier said than done because it requires a lot of work, it requires good agreements, uh, it actually requires, as I said there, require insight. That must be a part of the agreement, of course, with your vendor. But having that as part of a, uh, uh, as, um, as the agreement, that enables you to have a good dialogue uh, with your vendor about how to secure. 
It also enables you to um, understand how you can uh, design your supply chain and help the subcontractors and the subcontractors to understand how they can protect their part of, uh, of it. So uh, this, is, uh, this is quite um, important, uh, but uh, very often very difficult because the vendors are not uh, in the place that they actually want to give you all the insight either. So this is a, uh, a little bit of a give and a take, but for your key vendors uh, or partners, uh, you should approach this uh, and say, how can we cooperate in this arena? to make sure that we reduce the risk and that we have a common understanding on how to reduce the risk. And of course, you have to use a risk-based approach uh, and require um, that your vendors pass us, uh, it, it missed one thing here, uh, requirement, risk-based approach when it comes to the requirements. Um, and you require that your vendors passes them on to subcontractors. And how do you make sure uh, that they commit on that? Uh, and that actually also, uh, deliver on that because I think yeah, it's not uh, it's yeah you can have the requirements and they can say yes we comply to this requirement but how do you make sure uh, that they pass them on uh, how can you get insight into that to verify that they actually are transparent and you need also to find the right balance between controls of vendors the subcontractors and the actual deliverances um, how can you make sure uh, that uh, your the subcontractors of the subcontractors as part of the deliverance to you actually have done uh, the right things? And it's not up to you to get to the subcontractor or the subcontractor beneath that. That's the, your uh, direct vendor uh, that needs to make sure that this is in place. But here you have to look into which kind of control mechanism can we have in place. Um, but you also have to look into how can I, I shorten my supply chains uh, as part of this. Uh, and then it's about giving positive commercial incentives for good security and cooperation about security. And I think uh, from the Nord perspective, this has been a key learning that uh, we can require a lot. Uh, we can control, but uh, to be positive uh, about how they work with and how they approach security, uh, that they um, work together with them to ensure that they have a good um, security roadmap. I mean, a security roadmap is not all about, uh, um, um, what should I say, uh, presenting to, you, to us what they deliver to us and that we have to pay for. It's more about the total security roadmap. Uh, and also, again, establish good arenas for cooperation about security, to actually talk about security, share insight about security, how to do things. Uh, security is quite practical, um, and uh, that's why it makes it uh, quite hard. It's, it's uh, not only a PowerPoint, it's hard work to establish routines and procedures and mechanisms and to discuss that and share that, uh, even though it is in a commercial um, relationship, uh, we need to establish uh, the trust to do that. And then again, also about the uh, threat picture, risk picture, and make sure that uh, we share those things. Um, yeah, uh, I said it, shorten your supply chain if possible. Uh, and re re reduce the exposure of values. Think very much about your critical assets and how can we make sure that uh, in that uh, arena, how can we reduce uh, the supply chain? Is it possible for us? And how can we challenge our vendors? Um, and equip yourself to deal with supply chain attacks. Uh, one thing is separate and segment where you can. Uh, that's a part of the design and the architecture and the setup. But what about handling of incidents? How do how what happens if uh, you have an attack, uh, and uh, and whose responsibility to fix it uh, is it? Uh, where have you placed the responsibility? It is it is of course at your hands uh, overall. But how do you interact with your vendor, and how do you make sure that your vendor has the right uh, agreements with their subcontractors so that they actually can be a part of uh, helping you 
uh, in uh, the incident, how handling the incident. Uh, talking for, from our uh, own experience, that's quite difficult. Uh, uh, but you have to talk about it before it happens and you have to practice this. Uh, and when um, um, supply chain attacks occur, you have to have uh, immediate dialogue about uh, the setup and the structure. Do we have everything in place? Do we have the right people? Um, and what meeting places do we need to establish? Is this uh, anything different from uh, from uh, last time? Because you can, if you have a big vendor, the supply chain attacks can be dif different and the subcontractors you need to involve will be different. But making sure that everybody understands that uh, this is a priority uh, and it may not be a priority from a vendor perspective. It might be a priority for, from your perspective because you're understanding uh, what this attack possibly could, um, uh, the consequence could be. Uh, or maybe there are already are a consequence, but, but maybe there are just to be consequence. And how do you make sure that your vendors understand that they have to support you in that and prioritize that? Uh, and how does your agreement support that? And of course, uh, you need to ensure necessary competence. Uh, a built-in capacity to understand, assess, and validate, uh, including security testing, uh, your suppliers and the deliveries. Um, and this has been a key message internally for, from me for several years that we need to ensure necessary competence, but it is complex and it's, uh, I think it's take time to understand it, but uh, eventually, uh, we are getting there with understanding that this competence you need is not about uh, placing the competence in security department, but in the IT organization, in the telecom organization, those who are working close to the vendors, so that, that they understand what to ask uh, and what to require and how to follow up and how to be close to the vendors also in a security perspective. So that was uh, what I thought should be my key message is here today. So, uh, and also that uh, I think um, if you want to get more insight, go to Tenor's uh, website where you can find Digital Secret 2020 and, uh, and you can download it and uh, look more, have a more deep dive into all these areas. So, with that said, uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> your attention. We have a question in the chat. Uh, I'll read it out loud. It's from uh, Henrik uh, Rittergaard saying, supply chain and third parties are interesting. And of course we need to look at them continuously. How would you say that an organization would approach a supplier or a third party provider where IT security risks has been observed as to get the best feedback and focus? Mm. Valuable question. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I think, uh, it depends on how you're set up with your ICT vendor, uh, but uh, most probably you have a uh, strategic relationship at top management level. I, I would have started there actually to make sure that uh, the top management of our company meets the top management of our uh, ICT vendor and, uh, and discuss this. Uh, and discuss uh, what have happened, uh, how can I be sure uh, that you are protecting my things, my deliveries, uh, your deliveries to me, um, making sure that they understand the risk. Um, so if, uh, um, so use the, uh, you, if I, I, I suppose that you have a uh, meeting arena structure, uh, as we have at least, uh, or and if you don't have, you should establish it so that you have the necessary meeting arenas with top management and uh, middle level management and those who are close to uh, the deliveries to your company. Okay, then uh, then I say goodbye and uh, over to you, Richard. <laughs>